Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome to another video and today we are going to talk about Robinhood stock. I wanted to go ahead and do a little bit of an analysis on this company. As many of you know, this is actually a company that me, Kevin, posted a lot on his YouTube channel. He continuously kept pumping and talking about this stock, but I just wanted to go ahead and cover it and see if there's any sort of opportunity here, given the fact that this stock is trading uh, pretty much at its all-time low. So. I know most of you guys know that when Robinhood first IPO, and I'm trying to find it, it had this insane rally. You know, it IPO'd at like $30 and ran all the way to 70. It was absolutely insane. But now that we look at how everything pretty much played out, you know, let's see how much the stock is down. 39% year to date. Well, it's down pretty much, uh, you know, almost 70 or 80% pretty much from its uh, all time high, which was in the same $70. So I just wanted to go ahead and get into it. And we're going to start off with this article right here. So I actually agree with this article a lot. Um, it says basically, basically, if you read the article, it's an opinion piece. And the author is basically arguing that Robin Hood had tremendous success because of the stimulus checks. And they're basically arguing that Robin Hood, uh, basically Robin Hood as a company basically got a stimulus check from the government, a huge stimulus check from the government. Like we're talking billions of dollars. And I would agree with them because we know for a fact that a lot of people got their stimulus checks and they were sitting at home and they all pretty much put it in the Robin Hood app and decided to gamble it on options or crypto or stocks. And so we know that a lot of that money went to Robin Hood because Robin Hood makes their money from payment for order flow. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later, exactly what that means. But for now, let's just go ahead and look at some numbers and kind of figure out why Robinhood has sunk so low. So if we look at uh, their earnings going forward from each quarter in 2021, 2021 was actually a monster year from them for them, at least at the beginning. But then towards the end of it, uh, that's kind of when the truth kind of came out. So if you look right here at monthly active users, you can see that they hit their peak right here in Q2. What's ironic about that is if you look at that same article, Q2 of 2021 is actually when people started to get their stimulus checks. So it makes sense that they've got a bunch of people on this app because people are getting free money from the government and they're immediately putting it into the Robin Hood app. But what's disturbing is uh, when you start to look further down Q3, their monthly active users dropped. And then you even look at Q4, their monthly active users dropped again. Now, from 2020, their monthly active users is still up. So, so that is a little bit of a positive, but coming from where their peak was, you can clearly see that those stimulus checks had a huge impact on Robinhood's business. And it's a major reason why the company did so well in Q2. So uh, by the way, that is about an 8% decrease, by the way, if you're looking at uh, their monthly active users compared to right here at 18.9. This 17.3 uh, is about an 8% decrease, so that's definitely not good. Uh, moving on to average revenue per user. This is just, these number, this number right here is so scary. It really just makes me say, I, I don't know why anybody would want to buy this company. And uh, that's just my personal opinion. I know some people are probably still investing in here. And I just really don't understand what me, Kevin, saw in this company. What would make him want to invest in here? I really don't understand, but he covered the stock so much. so. Average revenue per user for the quarter uh, decreased significantly. It decreased uh, about 39%. You can see here pretty much at the, actually, I guess their peak for average revenue was right here in Q1 of 2021. But seeing them go from uh, 137 all the way down to $64 is a gigantic drop. Like, like huge. Like that's, that's not very good. That's a... Uh, uh, really, really scary. And we know that the decrease in this was pretty much related to the lower trading volumes per user for options and stocks and things like that. Because remember, the, their revenue literally comes from payment for order flow. And like I said, we'll get to that. But you can see the drop right there. And yeah, it's just, it's just not good. Even looking at their total net revenues, their total net revenues look terrible. Once again, during that stimulus check period, they were killing it. You know, they, they've got a ton of revenue, but now when you look over at Q3 and Q4, when that stimulus money is dried up and everybody gambled their money on options and things like that, you know, Robin Hood's not looking so good. So, you know, that's, that's just not very good. It, it really isn't. I, I don't see it personally for this company, but I just want to go over it for anybody that might be in there. 
uh, anybody that might be thinking about buying this company. I mean, me personally, I don't. I still don't think I would buy this company. Uh, it, it just doesn't look good as a company. It really doesn't. I don't like the way that they make their money either. Uh, they're they're too dependent on uh, individuals putting money into their app, and we know they don't have anywhere near as many. Um, assets under management is somebody like a Charles Schwab or a Fidelity, but they do have a lot of users, so I'll give them that. They've got a lot of users, but like I said, even going back here, their users have dropped. So even though they still have uh, 17 uh, million monthly active users, it's, it's still a significant drop from where it was, at least in my opinion. So going back to this balance sheet, when you look at cash and cash equivalents, they've got about six, because remember this is in thousands, so you're doing six million times a thousand, so they've got about $6.2 billion in cash. And what's remarkable about that is they've got about $6.2 billion in cash and their market cap is only $10 billion. So I will say, uh, from an investing standpoint, it, it's, it's, it's very cheap valuation-wise. The valuation has come down uh, significantly to the point where they've dang near got just as much cash on the balance sheet um, as uh, their market cap is. They got about six billion in cash at least for that year of 2021, and their market cap is 10 billion. So let's just go ahead and go back. But as we go back on the balance sheet, it might start to pay uh, a better picture. See, see, this is interesting. This is what I'm talking about. So when you look at total current assets, is that right? Yeah. Total current assets. As a matter of fact, let's just look at total assets. They actually have more assets than their market cap is. So you look right here, total assets, the year of 2021, they've got about $19 billion in total assets, but they only have a market cap of about $10 billion. So there are some people looking at this stock like, okay, this, this might be investable for me because the valuation has just gotten so ridiculously cheap. But like I said, I see why. If they're just losing users every month and they're not making as much money from those users as they were, I mean, I, I kind of get it, especially if uh, those numbers continue to drop. Now, liabilities, obviously, they've got a crap ton of liabilities, too. So that's not good for free cash flow. But we can see here liabilities. They've got about $12 billion in 2021 in liabilities. Let's go ahead and move on over to the revenue. See, revenue in 2021 was very strong, and it really was because of that stimulus money. You know, that, that stimulus money significantly helped them. They've got about $1.4 billion in revenue, which is pretty impressive for what they do. But then when you look at the operating expenses, never mind. You know, they're losing a crap ton more money compared to uh, the revenue. You know, their total operating expenses is about $3.4 billion, but they're only bringing in about uh, $1.8 billion in revenue. And just looking at some of the things they spent money on, just wow. I mean, you've got... Uh, brokerage and transaction. I'm sorry. Yeah, brokerage and transaction. Brokerage and transaction isn't as bad, but technology and development, you're spending about $1.2 billion just on that alone. General and administrative, uh, $1.3. Yeah, I just want to dive deep into, at least do a small dive into Robinhood just to kind of give you guys the picture of why they're at where they're at. I mean, this looks like one of those companies that benefited from the pandemic. It really does. It looks like they kind of took advantage of all these kids who got stimulus checks and wanted to hurry up and flip that money or make quick money real quick and you know all that stimulus money dried up and we know that most retail investors lost their money because all the hype stocks and Robin Hood stocks are down so you know it was fun in 2021 the ride and the entertainment and everything you saw but when you look at the end not only did it not work out very well for individual investors but it didn't work out very well for Robin Hood either I mean their, their stock is absolutely in the toilet and they kind of deserved in my opinion so if you just want my honest opinion uh, in order for me to consider investing in this company, I would need to see these numbers start to turn around. I need to see monthly active users go back up, or at least they, they'd be able to hold uh, the number steady, at least let it stay steady and not continue to decrease. Uh, I need to see average revenue per user go up. And those are just things that I would need to see out of this company in order for me to even think about investing in it. Now, I just wanted to go ahead and explain real quick what exactly uh, payment for order flow is. And so basically, uh, payment for order flow is basically when a firm, such as like a market maker like Citadel or one of these gigantic firms that have all this money, basically pays another broker deal or like a Robin Hood to send them their orders. And so the issue with payment for order flow and why it's so controversial 
is that you may not get the best spread when you're placing a buy order. Uh, this means that if you are uh, buying with a market order, you may be paying maybe like one or two cents more on the price than you would somewhere else. And for limit orders, it may be harder for your trade to execute. And this is something that I saw personally when I used to use Robinhood. And this is why many people say that Robinhood trades aren't free, including Charlie Munger, because due to their payment for order flow method, you are basically paying for your trades. You're just paying less money than you probably would be on the legacy brokerages. And you probably don't quite see the fact that you're uh, paying more uh, for the stocks that you're trying to buy. You know, you may not see it. It's a little bit hidden, but when you really look at it, you are. And because their main source of revenue is payment for order flow, uh, this company could care less if you are winning or losing from your trades. And that's why pretty much anyone and everyone can get on their app and trade options uh, very quickly and easily, which options are very risky. Uh, but the reason why is because Robinhood makes money on that transaction volume. You know, they make money on you all placing orders and trades and the order flow, you know, rather than other methods. So they don't care how you do. They just want you to trade. They just want you to buy stuff on their platform. And that's why it's such an ethical issue uh, regarding Robinhood. But yeah, like I said, my final thoughts on this is this is not something I would invest in. I just wanted to do a little bit of a dive so you guys could kind of see and kind of see where my head is at with this company. I mean, it's so dirt cheap. It almost makes you want to go for it as a gamble. But like I said, I would have to see their uh, those numbers start to turn around uh, in order, you know, monthly active users and how much money they're making per use. I'd have to see something like that in order for me to possibly invest in this company. But if you want my honest opinion, uh, this company could go bankrupt, especially if the government comes out and bans payment for order flow, which is something that the SEC did talk about. So I'd be really careful with this stock. And uh, yeah, those are my thoughts. So thank you guys so much for watching. Feel free to like, share and subscribe and I will see you guys in the next one.